Hello. What we have here is a 1974 Johnson 9.9 .9 horsepower outboard. In this video, we're going to be talking about how to install a throttle cable onto the 9.9 .9 15 horsepower outboards. Should you be using it as a remote steering setup? Or a, or a remote control, as you'd usually call it. And just when you think you've seen it all, you come across this thing. I don't know if it's early or some type of weird prototype or what's going on, but there's a lot of weird stuff with this motor. I'll cover that in a later video. For now, we're talking about the throttle cable. So if you're gonna be doing this, one thing I would recommend doing is removing the tiller steering handle here off one of these things, because when it's all the way up, this can kind of be rotated and the gears can become kind of out of alignment or they won't mesh correctly. And then when you go to put it down, it, it breaks something, which I thought, yeah, this tooth right there is already chipped. So you don't need to. The thing is like, you're gonna want it up like that, but then the gears come out of alignment and you got problems. So I would, I personally would just pull the tiller handle off, but you don't have to. So here is the throttle connector end which would be on the motor somewhere that would then run up to your steering console. Uh, if you notice, there's no obvious place to put this. So I'll be showing you how. Uh, when, well, you used to, when you would buy a controller, you would have a bunch of little accessories that came with the controller. One of the accessories is this little throttle clip. That throttle clip needs to go onto your connector end. You can buy them separately. Sometimes they come with cables, rarely, but they do. And that is basically one of the things you're gonna need. That's a common clip on a lot of motors. So, yeah. Throttle cable will run where the stop switch is, under the starter, and then connect over here to this little handle. When rotating the tiller, you can see it move. So all our cable's gonna do is move that for us. On the side of the early motors here, we have these two little holes. That's where our bracket is gonna attach that I will show you in a second. One of the odd things about this motor is these holes are already popped out, meaning it probably already had the throttle connector in here. But why is the stop switch still here? That I can't figure out. And you could say it's a fluke, except it's also out for our, our shifter. So I don't know what happened here. Maybe it was a remote control and somebody converted it over. I don't know, it's weird. But here are what the things look like. They have a, it's kind of like a plastic rivet. You gotta go inside, you pop out the center pin, and then the outer little pin comes out. And that's how you, you get those out of there. And you can kinda see it down there. I guess not really. Yeah, I can't focus in there. Yeah, you would, you would basically push that little center pin out, and then you can get the rest of the thing out of there. So to make what I'm doing clear and obvious, I'm gonna pull off the air cleaner and probably the starter. All right, now we have the stop switch. On this particular one, it's running over here. Uh, I, I've never seen that, usually it's on the opposite side. All right. Now we can get to these connectors. Not many of them are going to use this type of connector. It's a self mating. So we have little clips on both sides. Usually you got to prime both up. And that came off. No, you can get in there with a ridiculously oversized wrench and get that plastic nut off there. Okay, now we're going to run into a slight little hiccup. That is, you cannot fit these connectors through that little hole. And it looks like previously somebody has cut and spliced these. I'm half tempted to do that as well. But you didn't come here to see me cut apart wires. You want to retain your switch if you can. I have this Leslie terminal tool, which is supposed to work on these, but it really doesn't. 
You can see a little pry marks in there where somebody else has been in there trying to do this. Well, it, it kind of came off. I'll put a link below to my video on how to properly remove these. Because I think these are both just going to fall apart. There we go. So what, see these little tabs right here? Those are little barbs that crimp onto the connector body. So when you slide this on there, it pushes them in so you can get the terminal out. Once the terminal's out, then you can slide the nut over it, slide this out. All right, with all that removed, you can, you got a pretty good idea of what's going on here. So this is the throttle bracket that we would use on these older motors. Um, we have these little, little recessed little cavities for the screw to fit. So that's what the screw should look like. I don't have both of them. I only have one. Since this is just a mock-up, I'm just going to use some nuts and screws. All right, it turns out my screws weren't long enough. But our throttle cable bracket will get installed right there. Let me put our nut on. Now, you wouldn't use a wing nut, of course. Use a lock nut, at least. There is our bracket installed. We will then need the cable clamp, which is this guy. It will drop down like so, and it has a little threaded part. And now our cable can be installed, our throttle cable. Gonna, hopefully it fits through here. Pretty embarrassing if it doesn't. All right, due to limited room, before you install your cable clamp, you should install your cable, because that makes sense. All right, so the back of our little clip and that little hole in our cable are going to slide right over that little boss right there. Now clipping this on, sadly, is really, really the hardest part. Let's go over there. All right, throttle is connected. Now, put that in, put that down. And that's how it installs. And of course, when you use your throttle on your remote shifter, it advances the throttle like so, throttle back, it goes back in. Easy. So, have you noticed what's weird on this soundboard? Comment below if you have. This will work pretty much on any engine that has the little provisions for it, or these two little holes. If you don't have those two little holes, or if you don't want to use this style, or if you just want to see the other style, let's dig into that. Okay, here we are on another outboard. This one's a little bit newer. We do not have the provisions on the side for the cable clamp. Okay, here we have our stuff removed. Here is the throttle little connector clip, I guess we'd call it there, where our throttle cable will attach. It will run through this hole and then clip on right there. Now, all we really need is a way to hold this trunnion, I believe it's called, or this adjustment knob right there. And that is what we have part number 321603. Now, it was shaped a little differently than these two. It was discontinued, replaced with 387781, which was then repackaged into 435448. These two, identical. If not for the packaging, you wouldn't be able to tell them apart. This one, eh, similar concept, just different. So what I have is 435448, which I lost all of, but I have the main components. The only thing I'm missing, is a clip. These two go together and then a little C-clip, actually a massive C-clip, 
goes onto the, that outer ring and holds everything together. Now this, this flat, if you notice, we also have that flat on our cable connector, so it fits in there. It warns you when you buy this, the instructions, it says if it doesn't fit, you may need a file so those flats then fit into there better. I've never experienced an engine that it doesn't fit into. And even if I did, honestly, I think the plastic would be easier to file down than the metal. So, yeah, keep that in mind. If it doesn't fit, that's why. We're going to need the clip. What is going to happen here is this is going to fish through where our stop button once was. It'll sit right there, and the throttle connector clip will clip on. In fact, I can do that now. So now that's not going anywhere. We will need our kit, which I don't have the C-clip for, keep that in mind. But I do have the main components, which are these. These will fit right over the trunnion and give you a way to retain the, the cable into that little hole. But if you notice, it doesn't quite line up, but if we rotate it, it does. So it will, well, see how it has this outer ring? You see the side profile of it? This outer ring is where our connector clip is going to clip on, but I don't have one. I could zip tie it on, but I'm a busy man. So that will fit, mostly, right in through our stop button hole. So there it is installed. Now, I don't have the connector clip, so some imagination is required here, but our stop button is now our cable holder. Our cable is secured in there with what should be our connector clip, and it clips on to the little arm back here. And if I was strong enough, I could move the other end of the cable, and you can see if this was held in properly, how this would work. And, much like the other kit, your steering bracket attaches there, your stop button, should you need it, will go there. The front provides a hole for your steering cable connector, which will go on right there. So yeah, that's basically all there is to it. Links below for products, hopefully, if I find any. So that's the end of the video. Hope you enjoyed it. Any questions, let me know. For some reason, this has been the most asked question I've ever had, even though I thought I covered it. So, anywho, I will see you next time.